Here's what I need you to do. I need you to admit the fact that you've gotten lazy. Only those who are willing to risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Look, you gotta want it as bad as you wanna breathe. This is a mentality, like, you gotta live this, you gotta eat this, you gotta... Every single thing you do, it's a mentality. Hard work, I'm sorry, there's no way around it. Hard work works, we can't cut corners. You have to take action now. Whatever that goal is, whatever that dream is that you're holding in your mind, now is the time. Now is your moment. Today is that day. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right here, right now. I need you to ask yourself, do you have the strength to keep fighting when so many others are throwing in the towel? Your problem is you think you can have an average mindset and get to the next level. The problem with many of you is that you got fooled. You got complacent. You got lazy. Somewhere along the line, you lost your enthusiasm, your optimism, your hunger. It's easy to be comfortable. It's easy not to try. It's easy to give up. But you're not robbing your teachers, you're not robbing your parents, you're not robbing the school. The only person that you're robbing is you because you're trying to take the shortcut. Every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, it's got to get better. I study as long as it takes. I pay whatever the price is. Why? I have too much to accomplish to be satisfied with where I am right now. I have too much on the line. I have too many people depending on me to win. I must stay hungry. You have everything you need to achieve anything. You can either be a victim of your life or the master of it. But the choice, that's yours to make. When you are hungry, you are creative. When you are hungry, you are innovative. When you are hungry, when you are no longer full, when you are no longer satisfied with where you are and you raise your standards, it is only then that you can have your future. So those dreams and goals that some of you have that may seem larger than life, good. That's what I want you to go after. And don't let the fear of the failure, don't let the fear of perfection hold you back. You won't be perfect. You will make mistakes. But I promise you this, you're never going to know if you can sink or if you can swim unless you jump in the water.
You need to start feeling guilty when you're not achieving or striving towards your dream. You can use the people that doubted your dream as motivation. When your dreams are dying and when you don't have enough strength to go on, I need you to stop the procrastination. I need you to let go of all limitations. So I'm here to tell you today that you can have anything you want, be anyone you want, but you're gonna have to work. See, dreams, aspirations, they're not easily obtained, but one of the hardest things to do is to keep going, is to keep chasing. People will give up their dreams for certainty, but I'm telling you that your life will start to change when you become more committed to your dreams than your comfort zone. Stop being pushed around by the fears in your mind and start being led by the dreams in your heart. This is your moment. And you gotta look in the mirror and believe that. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So take advantage of today. Take advantage of tomorrow. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have to do what you want in life. Life's too short to be working on someone else's dream. And I know it's difficult to follow your dreams, but it's even worse if you don't. You have to find a way to build your own dream or someone else will hire you to build theirs.
So how do I build trust with you? So if you're above me in the chain of command, if you ask me to do something as my boss, I do it and I do it well and I do it consistently and I go above and beyond what you ask. And if you want me to deliver this project by this date, I deliver it earlier and I deliver it to the best of my ability above and beyond what you expected. And you say, oh wow, when I ask Jocko to do something, he actually does it. And that's where it starts. It starts with that right there, with me performing, me offering advice, me, me taking what you asked me to do and doing it. That, that's the number one thing. If we flip those roles, and now I'm in charge of you, how do I build trust with you? Well, what I do is I give you a project. And instead of me giving you a project and then saying, hey, here's how I want you to do this and here's how I want you to do the next part, instead I say, hey, here's a project, let me know how you want to do it. And then you go figure out how you want to get done. And I don't micromanage you and I don't ask you a million questions about and, and, and tell you, no, don't do it like that, do it like this. I let you do it. And what does that tell you? That tells you that I trust you. I trust you. And when I trust you, you start to trust me. And by the way, if something goes wrong, instead of me jumping down your throat and hanging you out to dry and making you an example in front of everyone, I say, hey, let's figure out what went wrong. Did I not support you well enough? Did I not give you what you needed? And so you realize, oh, he's not going to hang me out to dry. He's going to give me the support. He's going to try and teach me if something goes wrong instead of try and drop the hammer on me. I get asked all the time, if I could go back and talk to the younger me, what would I say? And if I was gonna go back and talk to the younger me, really it would be like me talking to many of all the younger youths. It'd be like me talking to my younger son. And the number one thing that I would say is don't let anybody tell you what you can't, you won't, or you shouldn't do. Everybody will try to put a limit on you. But what I've learned is that nobody can stop you but you, and that you are going to have to break your own limit. I would encourage you not to minimize the importance of your creativity, your ability to imagine, to dream big, the human mind, this thing called your imagination. It's where so many dreams and goals and unbelievable things have been achieved. If I could sit down, I would, I would encourage you over and over again to, to find ways to spark your imagination, to create, to be a visionary. See, you were born to leave your fingerprints on history. These fingerprints, these 10 fingers, they're unique to me, they're unique to you. There's only one of a kind, there's only one of you, there's only one me. And you can do anything that you want. And you can actually get to a place if you use your imagination and your creativity and not allow anybody to limit you and not limit yourself. That you can leave these fingerprints on history. And just as much as I would talk about the importance of creativity, you best believe that I would emphasize education education to become educated, educated to become an expert. Education, man, will be one of the most powerful tools that we have, our ability to learn, our ability to sit down and to grow intellectually, to learn more about how the world operates because knowledge is power. Because truthfully, the world's lazy. Everybody talks about what they want to do. Everybody talks what they want to achieve. Everybody posts, but nobody wants to roll up their sleeves and just go. We've gotten lazy and complacent. And so I need you just to understand that you need to apply yourself, to take the time to be intentional, to grow, to learn, to be uncomfortable in the areas that you don't necessarily know. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Because at the end of the day, I promise you this, son, that no matter what everybody else is talking about, no matter what everybody else is thinking that they're going to do, a lot of people sit on the sideline and don't apply because they're afraid of failing. So I would challenge you to understand the importance of education. And don't let anybody ever tell you anything different. You see, because I know too well, life for many of us, man, there's challenges. We have faced adversity and circumstances and storms that we didn't ask for. Sometimes it's like we're just a, a freshman and a sophomore and we're trying to grow up in life and figure out first off, who am I and, and what do I want to do with my life and, and what's my future hold? And, and we have all this, all the pressure of just kind of growing up in the culture and trying to fit and find our space. And then we, 
We have things that happen to us that we didn't ask for, like serious, challenging issues of maybe abuse, mental, physical, emotional, maybe deaths in our family. Like we as young people, we didn't ask for some adversity. We didn't ask for some challenges. And it's almost like somebody puts this plate of food right in front of you, right? And they're like, this is life. This is your plate of food. This is all that you get in life. Now deal with it. And you're like, I don't like that. I don't want it. But this is all that you have to deal with because it's the real situation that you're having to figure out. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Yeah, I mean, lots of us. And I would emphasize the importance of resiliency, the mentality that giving up never is and never will be an option. There'll be all kinds of challenges and storms in life that we have to face, things you didn't sign up for, things you didn't ask for, but life is life. And what I do know is that long as you continue to put one foot forward, that you will make it. It won't always be easy. There'll be outside pressures, inside pressures, pressures all around. But the storms of life don't define us. It's how we navigate those storms. We have to continue to develop the tools and we have to continue to be able to develop the ability when adversity and when challenges and objects and obstacles get in our way, that's called life. We've got to be able to understand how to mature in a way that we don't overreact, that we don't act impulsive, that we don't, we don't make decisions that will forever impact our future. We don't make decisions that will forever set us back and, and put us back years behind because we were impulsive or we were erratical or irrational or we didn't understand how to properly process the emotion. Like we need to, as young people, make sure that as we're facing adversity and challenges, that we understand that it's okay to not be okay, that it's okay that we're going through some things and that the truth is we're not alone because life, not only for students, but for adults, for people will always be full of challenges. The, the goal is though, is for us like my dad when he used to smack the basketball off my face. Listen, I have to identify the problem and then I have to figure out how to get around the problem. I'm not gonna get consumed where all I focus and I'm always just tore up on the problem because all of my focus is on the problem, the problem, the problem. I'm not focusing on the solution, the solution, the solution. Most creative people fail at producing their creative product and monetizing it, right? So your default position, if you're a creative person, is you're gonna fail. And so, and that's because it's hard to come up with something new and it's, and it's hard to present it to the market at the right time and it's hard to market it. Like those things are really, really difficult. And so what successful entrepreneurs do is they just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And eventually, if they're fortunate, one of their ideas happens to hit the right place at the right time. And so that's also Dar Darwinian in mm. some sense. You know, you're creating all these little enterprises that are sort of alive. They're, they're run by people after all. And, even if your idea is good, that doesn't mean it will be successful. There's so many things that have to be taken into account. So this is partly why persistence and that's part of conscientiousness is so useful. It's like, you know, what do they say? If, if at first you fail, then try, try again. And, um, and that would probably mean try something different rather than the same thing. But persistence is helpful because it enables you to run many, many experiments. And, and you need to know that the baseline is failure. You know, it's important because otherwise you'll blame that on yourself. You know, and, and some of that's useful because there's probably some things that you could improve about yourself. But it's very difficult to go from zero to one, you know. It's very, if you're starting out as a salesperson, for example, the hardest sale is the first customer. And then, you know, they get easier with each additional customer. When I genuinely look at my life, I see there are a few things that really matter. Freedom really matters to me. Unfortunately, even when people know what matters to them, they usually spend more time on minor things. Things like gossip, a celebrity love affair, or how their neighbor Tina doesn't care for her kids enough. Most people imagine things they want, they dream about it, but they never really do anything about it. It's not because they don't want their dreams to come true. Of course they want the house, of course they want the car, of course they want the loving partner. 
here is what happens. When they start to work towards their dreams, they are constantly challenged by invisible walls. These invisible walls are limiting them every day. To understand this better and break those walls, I started to distinguish freedom into levels. The first level of freedom is freedom from the past, from the conditioning, the future. My name is Sarah Wells and I'm an Olympic athlete. I competed in the 400 meter hurdles at the London Olympics and yeah. Understand the pain, the struggles, and all of the things that you felt that are holding you back. It's not going to hold you back for very long. Because as long as you are alive, you have to continue to move on. You have to continue to live. You can't allow the misery and the hurt and the pain hold you back to a position where you can't move forward because as long as there's life in that body, you got things that you need to get done. The reality is we cannot go on forever, but we must go on. We can't live forever, but we must continue to live. We must fight for something. Don't fight for nothing. Live and breathe and fight and believe and understand that it's not over for you. It's not over for you because you are still here. So make the most of your life.
for me for real. I want you to talk less. Listen to me, talk less and grind more because I need you to make an investment in yourself. And you don't make an investment in yourself by talking. Now, I'm not telling you don't share your dreams, but for some of you, you get that euphoric feeling just from talking. Like for real, when you talk, it's like you feel like you've accomplished something. When you talk, you feel like you've done something. All right, maybe your mama, maybe your best friend, I don't know, maybe you need to look in the mirror and tell yourself, but do me a favor, shut up. Stop talking so much. You don't gotta talk about your dream. Look, do me a favor, let your work, look, look, talk less, grind more. Let your work speak for you. And so for some of you, for real, this ain't been your best semester, but you still got time to pass that class. You still got time to finish strong, all right? And so even if you gotta finish ugly, if you gotta finish downright dirty, let's just get it done. But right now, we're in that last week. This ain't time to quit. This ain't time to doubt yourself. Remember what I told you, never give up, never give in. Just hang in there, all right? Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. That's the difference between the greats. That's, that's what separates them. When they don't have no more, when it's over, when they're tired, when they're frustrated, when they're ready to give up, when they spent their last dime, that's when they get started. How are you hearing me? It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money, when all your energy gone, when you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you find energy that did not exist, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. Listen to me closely. When you get to the point where enough is enough, when sitting at the table, there'll be time enough to count it when the dealing's done, baby. Are you hearing me? After you take your final exam, you got time for PlayStation. So when you... ...require thousands of actions. Hear me and hear me carefully. So do me a favor, shut up, shut up. Stop talking, you talk too much. You talk entirely too much about your dream. You talk too much about your goal. Say it once, say it twice, no more than three times and get to work. All right, you ain't gotta respond to your haters. You ain't gotta respond. My boy told me the other day, some teacher told him, like, you know, you can't do this. You're not smart enough. You're not intelligent enough. Like, I don't even know why you decided to get in this program. Like, you can't do it. And my boy was talking to me. I'm like, look, shut up. I don't need to hear what my man said. That's on some negative stuff. Look, let your work speak for you. Like, quiet, my man. Shut my man up. Shut him down. How do you shut him down? You don't shut him down by talking about what he said. You don't shut him down by talking about, you know, how you feel about what he said. You shut him down by working. So I need y'all to do me a huge favor, all right? Bruce Lee put it best. He said, knowing is not enough, we must supply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. So I told you, second quarter living, we're not talking no more. Second quarter living is about application, all right? It's about taking it to the next level. It's not about talking, it's about doing. You gotta be careful doing too much talking because whatever it is you say, whatever it is you say, I wanna be an NBA All-Star. I wanna win a Super Bowl. When you open up your mouth and say that, there are, do you understand how many push-ups you gotta do? 
how many reps you got to do. Do you know how many stretches you got to do? Do you know how many plays you got to practice? When you say you want to be a lawyer, do you know how many cases you got to sit through? Do you know how many uh, books you got to read? Do you understand how many classes you have to take? Do you understand when you say you want to be a registered nurse? When you say a nurse, you know how much clinicals you have to do? How many chapters you have to read? Do you understand how early you have to get up? You are about to immerse yourself in your studies. You will only concentrate. You will only focus on the things that are going to help you with your final examination. You're not doing any leisure right now. You will have time for the leisure later. How much, how much work do I have to put in to make this happen? Because it's not going to happen just because you talked about it. It's not going to happen just because you said it, right? So do me a huge favor. You've wished enough. Enough wishing. You've wished enough. You've waited enough. Now let's get to work. You can't go back. There's no options at this point. We're in the fourth quarter. It's do or die, baby. We do not have time. We about to go get it, right? It's ours for the getting. You're in school. You can do it. You're in school. You were smart enough to get there. You're smart enough to get out. You can do it, and you're not leaving. Listen to me. We ain't going home. We ain't going nowhere until we get the degree. You ain't going nowhere until you get it done. And so we're going to lock everything else down for the next two weeks. We shutting it down. We shutting it down. And do we doing what we got to do to get what we got to get?